Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and to the third video on this power meter here as I've now given up waiting for a response from Shimano Australia and I've since returned the unit for a full refund. In fact, I think the retailer just wanted to wash their hands of the entire problem, so issuing a refund to me was probably the easiest way for them to get that done. Now, this hasn't been an ideal process to go through because one, I purchased this power meter to validate the new firmware from Shimano, and secondly, to use the power meter as a baseline to compare other power meters to. It's what I do. Unfortunately, firmware version 4.2.0, the chain ring sensing firmware, simply didn't work. In fact, it was pretty bad, meaning that I couldn't use this power meter for my own racing, training, or testing to compare other power meters to. A quick summary from the initial review of this power meter was that Shimano was scaling up the power meter by 5 to 6% when riding in the big chain ring. I think 5.74 was the estimate that I came up with. The fact this power meter wasn't even close to its plus or minus 2% margin of error when it comes to accuracy meant that I didn't even bother digging further into this at the time. While I was waiting for a response from Shimano on this one, and I did give them a few months, I ended up digging further into this power meter and exactly what they were doing with firmware version 4.2.0. And what I found was very, very surprising. I have discovered that Shimano have made a power meter that works. They do have a power meter that when compared to other trusted sources is great. In fact, I would even call it excellent. And contrary to what they've replied back to me initially last year, their power meter can absolutely be compared to other power meters and the numbers line up really well. Okay, what the hell, Llama? What have you discovered? Right. Well, what I found was that if you look only at the left-hand side and completely discard the right-hand side, they've got an excellent power meter. While Shimano will never admit the problems that we're seeing on the right-hand side, their firmware does the talking for them. This new firmware only scales the right-hand side because that's where the problem lies, but we already know that. But let's not dwell on what doesn't work. Let's have a deep dive into what does. Okay, before digging into these numbers, just rewinding back to my original analysis of this power meter, and the answer was there on the screen all along. Further investigation is required. Are they scaling up the total power, or are they just scaling up the right-hand side? Now, I did pose that question, but if I had just looked over my shoulder, the answer's right there. So you can see Asioma Duo on the left-hand side for that entire section was averaging 90.97 watts, and the Shimano power meter, going in both modes, scaling and non-scaling mode, we're still averaging 90.40 watts on the left-hand side. It's the right-hand side that, uh, that went to... Funky Town. Yes, Funky Town indeed. Now onto the data set that I've run some numbers over to bring us to the estimate of exactly what I think Shimano are doing with this power meter. Shimano R8100P with the latest firmware up against the trusted Asioma Duos. Indoors here, this was back in November 29th. So again, I have been sitting on this for a while. I've given Shimano a number of months to respond. We've got nothing. Here we are. And steady state sections here, 200 watts and 250 watts. Okay, so that's total power, that's overall. Now I did trick the bike by removing the front derailleur, sitting it in the bottle cages and performing phantom shifts where the power meter would change its values based on where it thought the chain was. The bike was physically in the small chain ring for this first block, and there's other blocks I did in the big ring and tricking it to go up and down. Anyhow, that aside, you can see the numbers changed when I did a front phantom change. So here, 200 watts, uh, it then came a little closer when the bike thought it was in the big chain ring, so things were just wonky. And the same here, so 250 watts steady state, where the numbers should be lining up, and they don't, and then when I phantom change to the big ring, they become a little closer, but still no good. Right, that's the overall power though. What we want to know is a left-right split, and that's where things get very interesting. So overall here for this section, 19 minutes, let's call it 20. 113.81 on the left side, Shimano, 114.62 on the Asioma Duos. The Shimano R8100P is plus or minus 2%. The Asioma Duo is plus or minus 1%. That's within spec. Right hand side, funky town. Um, I'll pull up this just section through here. Again, 102 to 103, very close. Right hand side, not close. Diving into the 250 watt steady state. So 127.39, 128.30, 103, 125. It's the right hand side being off. Left hand side, being excellent. There's the data right there. And lastly, this section through here, actually not lastly, let's go second lastly, 127 versus 127, 117, the rest of the watts are off at the cricket, and 124 on the Asium and Duos. And then just riding along, let me pick a random section from here to here, 101.89 on the left, Shimano, 101.63 on the left, Asioma Duo, again, 
Shimano making an excellent power meter on the left hand side. Right hand side, to the Taylor Swift concert. Doing its own thing, shaking those watts off. Now unfortunately, the Shimano dual sided power meter is one of the rare power meters you can't split and just use the left hand side to then double and give you an estimate. Something that Pioneer did, Four Eyes do, Stages, Inpeak, I believe Machine have one as well. But Shimano have all their eggs in this one basket of dual power meter that doesn't work very well. Well, not as a whole. That left hand side is pretty good. Now before jumping off my favourite website, just some back of the napkin math that I've done as I converge towards the number that I think Shimano are applying to their power meter with this firmware only on the right hand side. Now previously, I estimated they were scaling up the power meter by 5.74% overall. Now given the scaling is only taking place on the right hand side, we need to double that number. So 11.48 on the right hand side. A few of the numbers that I've run over this data set and a few others, I get 88.34, 88.07, 87.04, 84, giving us an average of 87.55% difference in the small ring compared to the big, giving us a difference of 12.45%. That's within 1% of my other measurements. So I'm coming at this from two angles and I will meet it in the middle with my latest estimate of what I think they're applying when you're in the big ring. And I reckon they're scaling up by 12% on the right hand side when the power meter is in the big ring. Now that is only back of the napkin math, but that was pretty close to what I had before. And I really hope I don't have to do this again to give us the third data point, which should pretty much confirm what's going on. So there we have it without saying anything at all, Shimano is speaking volumes with their firmware updates. One day, they will solve this problem, one day. And honestly, I cannot wait to see them get this right. Now I don't make this content to see them fail, that's where they already are. I make this content to see them succeed. And when they do, I'll be 100% behind that product maybe even 112% when riding the big ring. All right, with that, thanks for watching.